On Wednesday marked the second year anniversary of Genshin Impact, and I gotta say we've come a long way. From 21 playable characters, we're now onto more than double at 55, along with Inazuma, the Chasm, and Konomiya, and most recently, Sumeru. Since it is the two year anniversary, I thought it'd be a pretty good idea to condense the entire history of Genshin in one video and basically go over every major event in every patch to see what happened and maybe get some nostalgia. Before we get on though, do you guys know that 88% of you guys aren't subbed? The number is growing even larger, so maybe drop a sub. It's free and it helps out the channel a lot. Okay, on to the video. 1.0. The game released out into the public where everyone quickly realized that Diluc is by far the best main DPS character along with Venti who is still regarded to be one of the best groupers in the game. Klee was also introduced who was alright back in the day but to be honest there were more people talking about Diluc than Klee so um yeah. Aside from the characters releasing, there was an event called the Elemental Crucible, which was a co-op event where you kill bosses as a team and collect these little cubes to charge up your crucible. Honestly, this event was really fun back in the day, which makes it kinda sad because they never re-ran it. Version 1.1 was probably one of the best versions we've had. We had the release of Child and Zhang Li's banner, along with Diona and Xinyan, who are both, um, great yeah, great characters. We also had an event called Unreconciled Stars where we first met Scaramouche. When I looked at some of the event footage of this event, I got some real nostalgia because of how good this version was and how many cool characters were released. Apart from the characters and events though, we also got a lot of quality of life items added to the game. One was Condensed Resin and the other one was the NRE, which lets you quickly eat without having to go inside your inventory. One of the biggest updates though was the resin cap was increased from 120 to 160, which is something most players probably don't know about. All in all though, 1.1 had a lot of quality of life improvements along with two husbandos, so like I said earlier, I think it was a pretty strong patch. In version 1.2, we got the beautiful region of Dragonspine along with Ganyu and Albedo. They also added the reward when you ascend your character to 40, 60, and 80, you get an Acquaint Faint, which I think is one of the more useful features we have now. The event Lost Riches also came out this patch, giving players a little pet silly we all know and love. But not much happened between versions 1.2 and 1.4, just some new characters like Zhao, Hu Tao, and Rosaria, along with Geovishaps and Abyss Heralds. In version 1.5, however, we got the release of the Serena Teapot along with two new artifact sets, Tenacity of the Millilith and Pale Flame, which sort of makes sense because the character banners in 1.5 were Yula and Zhongli. This is also the patch where it halves the resin needed to do trounce domains three times a week, which is another quality of life thing we have, and it's still very useful to this day. Version 1.6 was the last patch before version 2.0, and it was pretty exciting. First off, we got Kazuha, who is arguably the best animal support, and we also got introduced to Magu Kenki, who will later see in Inazuma. The main event during this patch was Golden Apple Archipelago, which is also probably one of the most enjoyable events we've ever had, giving us an entire new map to explore and a pretty good storyline. All in all though, version 1 was really fun and added a bunch of quality of life improvements to give players an easier time playing the game. We got introduced to a bunch of characters and had a really good story in my opinion, but now we're on to 2.0. With the release of Inazuma and the Electro Mami, I would say that this is one of the moments where Genshin peaked. Let's start off with version 2.0 obviously. Like I said earlier, this is when Inazuma was released alongside Ayaka, Yoimiya, and Sayu, which was pretty hype. Their respective weapons were released as well, along with Inazuma's regional weapons like the Hamayumi and Amanoma Kagauchi. We also got the new artifact set, Shimanawa Reminiscence and Emblem of Severed Fate, which to this day is regarded as one of the best artifact domains to farm because of how versatile it is for so many characters. They also released Artifact Strongboxing this patch, letting players trade three 5-star artifacts for one 5-star Glad, Noblesse, Wanderers, or Bloodstain piece. We of course got all the new local Inazuma bosses like the Pyro Hypostasis and the Perpetual Mechanical Array along with another rerun of Lost Riches so newer players can get their pet Sealy. All in all, a really jam-packed patch and is probably one of the ones that put Genshin on the map for a lot of new players to join. Alright, now I very vividly remember version 2.1. This was the patch where literally everyone I knew saved for and pulled on because it was the newest edition of our resident Electro Mommy, Raiden Shogun, along with our Princess of Watatsumi Island, Sanganomiya Kokomi. They also released a couple new bosses like the Hydro Hypostasis and the Thunder Oceanid, and also the brand new trounce domain, Senora. I'm pretty sure they added um, a small enemy. Uh, what was it called? It was uh, pretty easy. It was tiny. Uh oh, right fucking specters. Not much new was released this patch, but what made this patch, and more specifically Raiden's banner, so special was because it's still to this day the highest earning single character banner. Technically though, Ayaka's rerun banner was the highest earning, but I'll talk about that later. This is also the patch where the first anniversary event was taking place, and I gotta say, it's still to this day the worst tragedy that's happened to Genshin. There was review bombing, tweets shit-talking the game, and so many angry players pissed off at Hoyoverse for being a greedy piece of shit. Hoyoverse then gave out another 10 wishes to shut up all the players players, which calmed them down a little bit, but that doesn't take away from it being one of the most memorable moments in Genshin history. Version 2.2 wasn't that exciting, just some small changes here and there like increasing the amount of artifacts you can carry from 1000 to 1500, and also adding Surumi Island, you know, the annoying fog island you have to unlock like 4 times in a row or something, along with Rift Hounds. This patch is also where we got the most broken 5 star character, Aoi, 
and child got his dedicated weapon but it was paired with memories of dust which uh i uh you know l hu tao also got a rerun so this patch was all right for child and hu tao mains but again not much happened 2.3 had some pretty interesting changes. First off, we got the Golden Wolfhorn back down in Tsurumi Island, along with the new artifact domain Husk of Opio Dreams and Ocean Hued Clan. We also got the first Arataki Ito banner, who in my opinion at least, is one of the most fun characters in the game. We got his weapon of course, which is also one of the first ones to have 88.2 crit damage, which is insane. Version 2.3 is also the first patch to have two event character banners at one time. Albedo and Yua both had a rerun and an event together, where Albedo stabs Albedo, which was kinda funny, but nevertheless, this patch had some content, but nothing game breaking. Version 2.4 had a couple cool things, but nothing that amazing. First off, they added event skins for Kutsing and Ningguang, along with new outfits for Jean, Amber, Mona, and Rosaria. If you're wondering though why these four seemingly random characters have some new outfits, it's because the Chinese regulations apparently have a no booba and no showing skin rule. So in China at least, these four characters are forcibly set to have these updated clothes with no cleavage and fishnets or whatever these uh, Rosaria leg things are called. 2.4 also introduced Shenhe and Yunjin, who are some pretty cool characters, but not very universal. They released more fucking inspectors and the twin bathysmal vishaps which are still to this day so annoying to kill we also had enkonomiya this patch which was honestly so annoying to explore in 100 percent but it did have some cool mechanics for puzzles so it was whatever on to 2.5 though we got our first rerun of our electro mommy along with you guessed it our other electro mommy i remember back then so many players were sitting crisscross applesauce for yai to come out but i gotta say her release was i mean it wasn't the best first banner but dude the people that liked yai loved yai i remember joining a public genshin discord server and literally four people in the voice chat that i was in had c6 yai with her dedicated weapon this is when we also got the ride and trounce domain which most players would probably say is the hardest boss in the open world a couple quality of life changes happened as well like how the crafting table and the blacksmith got new uis along with artifact filtering all in all though 2.5 was a pretty good update with a ride and rerun yai's banner and a bunch of useful ui changes that i still use to this day okay now i'm a hundred percent biased when i say that 2.6 was probably my favorite patch for starters, they added one of the best characters, Ayato, along with Ayaka's rerun in the second half. They also added two new artifact sets in the Chasm, one for Ayato and one for Zhao. The Ayato one is his best in slot, but this one for Zhao is really kind of not really good. They also added the Chasm here, which honestly probably took the cake for the most annoying place to explore, but let's talk about the main thing that happened this patch. Now, I talked really briefly about it earlier, but Ayaka's banner lasted 42 days instead of the normal 21 days. The reason was because Shanghai had some really strict COVID rules at the time, and Hoyoverse wasn't allowed to go to their office or something, I'm not really sure. Basically, since they were in lockdown, they weren't able to change the patch, so Ayaka's banner lasted twice as long and is technically the highest highest earning Genshin banner. Alright, onto version 2.7. Regarding new characters, we got Yuan, who had some controversy at the start because a lot of players basically just said, doesn't Singsho just do the exact same thing? And while that is true, Yuan being a 5 star character deals way more damage and is also a bit easier to build because she ascends with crit rate. Personally, I think that Yuan is probably one of the best pulls I've done on my account and she's someone I use in basically all of my teams now. Aside from Yuan, we also got Kuki Shinobu, who if I'm remembering correctly, got, I don't want to say hate, but not many people showed much interest. Back then, her kit and playstyle didn't really serve a purpose in really any team, but now since Dendro reactions are out, she does serve a pretty good support in something like a Hyper Bloom team. 2.8 introduced us to Shikano and Heizo, who's probably one of the coolest Catalyst users we have, and also, we finally got another Kazuha rerun. After 358 days, we finally got another Kazuha rerun. I'm probably not alone when I say that this banner is one we've been waiting for for so long and is one that's really exciting to see again. Aside from Heizo and Kazuha, the event Summertime Odyssey with the area Golden Apple Archipelago reran, along with Kazuha's story quest, which I gotta say was really fun. We also got the sword Kagar Survey Ishin, which to me personally is probably one of the coolest ones in the game. Spectres got changed as well and is probably one of the best patches we've had. First off, they got reduced HP and resistance to interruption. They also made it so specters can be grouped, which is an insane patch because before 2.8, if you tried to group a specter, they would kind of just fly away. But that was basically it for Inazuma. A bunch of record-breaking banners and a really fun version overall. I gotta say that it slowed down towards the end, but it had a lead up to our newest version, 3.0, Sumeru. I gotta say, it didn't really start out great because of the 3.0 livestream. The entire livestream was basically two guys talking about what they're gonna release and not really anything game-breakingly new. I mean, we got Tainari, Kawai, and Dori, but I just expected the livestream for what I would call the biggest patch in the game to be a little more special. Nevertheless though, we got Sumeru and also a new element, Dendro, which has some really fun and interesting teams. They literally added so many things like new animals, fruits, and some other quality of life things like how you can convert wood into different types and the achievement search bar which is so useful. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm downplaying Sumeru's patch. It's actually really fun and a really nice change of pace. 
There's just not much I can say about this patch except for a new map, new element, and some nice additions to the game. Um, uh, oh yeah, the event Lost Riches got a rerun so more players can get their pet Sealy. Actually, huge. But I gotta say, since version 3.0's livestream was kinda shit, I really didn't expect version 3.1's to be any better, but I gotta say, that was not the case. Version 3.1. Now, as of me making this video, only the first half of patch 3.1 is actually out, so that's all I can really talk about. But I gotta say, it's great so far. Not only was the livestream one of the best ones ever, we got Sino and Candice in the first half, and are gonna get Nilo in the next patch, which I'm so hyped for. They also released the desert area of Sumeru, which has been a fucking wild ride exploring all the pyramids, and uh, hidden waypoints, but I gotta say, it's been great so far. The story's been good too, but I'm really excited to see what they release next, because even with the desert area of Sumeru out, it's still not even 100% done. Well, that's basically it. The entire history so far of Genshin condensed as much as possible. If you guys enjoyed, a sub to the channel helps out a lot, and also make sure to join the Discord and maybe follow me on Twitch, because I'm going to be pulling a shit ton when Nilo comes out. If I missed any major events, make sure to tell me in the comments, because I feel like I forgot a couple of things, but I wanted to make this video as jam-packed as possible, so I'm sorry if I skipped anything. Well, that's all. Goodbye, YouTube.